with the joy that is FedEx notifications. I just got notification that another one of my packages has been delivered. So the first two packages this morning were just boring ones, like there's an emergency light, some batteries and other stuff. This one I'm actually quite excited about. Um, I'm going to do a big unboxing because, as I said, most boat packages don't interest me in the slightest, but this one does. And it came from a conversation at the Miami Boat Show. Um, Mantis Anchors reached out to us and said, do you want to try one of our anchors? It's the best anchor in the world. And I'm like, nah, it ain't. But anyway, um, seeing as I kind of long gave up on trying to keep the weight down on the boat, um, it's more actually my crap now than Teresa's stuff. Although we both have an equally large amount of rubbish. In fact, so much so that we had a diver scrub the boat the other day and he's like, oh, dude, you need to gel cut, you, sorry, you need to anti-foul another two inches because your boat's sitting so low in the water. And I'm like, yeah, that could be the amount of stuff we've got. Anyway, so, um, we have a new anchor, which apparently is gonna revolutionize our lives. Although, I'm fairly happy with the anchor we've got, but apparently this sets first time every time or they give you a free unicorn or something else. So we will see, we'll just see exactly what they are going, how it works. So rather than cluttering the office up, I will go and remove all my packages. So let's get this. Get this apart, it actually has to be assembled, but I've got um, a fortress anchor which has to be assembled as well, so I'm, I'm okay with that. I kind of, I talked to them at the boat show, I was a little bit unsure about having an anchor that needed to be kind of like assembled. I like to see welds, but let's get on and get this done. It's a big old anchor. I always like uh, a slightly oversized anchor. That really is a big anchor. Mm. All right. So there are only six bolts to this. Six bolts and three pieces. So I'm kind of wondering how long is this going to take? Don't know. Um, Assembly for me is always, oh no, bugger. <laughs> Broken nail. <laughs> bugger. Good morning. Um, in typical sailing fashion, it is Monday morning and we are meant to be leaving this week. And as most sailors will relate to, you start doing one job and then find out that it leads to another job that you never thought you were going to have. So this morning's problem relates to the new anchor. Now, there's nothing wrong with the anchor itself. The anchor is connected to the chain by something called a swivel. Now, when I went to take the old anchor off and put the new anchor on, it transpires that the screw which holds the swivel in place is normally opened and closed or tightened with an allen key but whoever put the anchor on and it wasn't me stripped the inside thread out so i can't tighten it as much as i wanted to which worries me because it's the only thing holding the anchor to the boat so we need to do some work on that today to find a way of making sure that the anchor this little screw the little grub screw that holds the, the, the swivel to the chain never works itself loose so we've got some uh we had a th uh, we had a, a little you know, meeting of heads and minds last night to try and work out how to try and address this. We started by putting just a little black dot on, on the screw and on the kind of like the bit that the screw goes into so you could see if it moved, but we kind of decided we were gonna do something a little bit more sturdy to uh, make sure that this thing never shifts because I can't really tighten it up hard. Anyway, so that's this morning's job. 
So what you're doing is using a pin punch. Center punch. Center punch around the swivel to distort the metal to lock it in. Yeah, hopefully. So we got this little pin punch just to distort the edges to kind of hopefully lock this screw in. I said it's tightened and it's been lock tighted but I don't like the fact that the thread was stripped out. So the next thing to do now is give it a good clean with alcohol, some acetone, and then run a bead of epoxy around it. Just for future reference, if ever don't use super glue, it's water soluble. So that's the next thing. Thank you. Shiner, you have uh, the spatula, spatula Clark, getting all this shit done. I do love this one of epoxy, it reminds me of my childhood. <laughs> you love the smell of epoxy in the, in the morning. morning. You smell that? You smell that? <laughs> there you go. Alright, just cheers yourself. Oh, job one complete. Epoxy the anchor swivel screw to stop it from coming out. Job two, take the anti-theft bar off of the life raft. So that's where we are with that. Job two complete, nice easy one, took less than a minute. I hope the rest of today's jobs are gonna be just as fast. I don't think they will, but uh, there you go. Take the wins when you can. Job three for the morning. Job three is starting the engine. Obviously we need an engine that runs. Yesterday I put some diesel bug treatment prophylactically in the tank as she's been standing. We had a problem with diesel bug a couple of years ago, so it's really, really important that you do anti-diesel bug your fuel. And it's a new boat, it's not something which is limited to old boats. So, first thing to do before we even think about starting the engine is make sure we've got the bloody seacock open. The engine seacock, otherwise we will bugger the engine up properly by overheating it and then distorting the uh, cylinder heads. So, or the head gasket, sorry. Distorting the head gasket. So, let's have a look at that. So that is now open, which basically means I haven't got to worry about boiling the engine. You should also, and get yourself into the routine of doing this, sailors who have, sailors know this, but if you're new to sailing, make sure that as soon as you start the engine, you look for water being expelled from the exhaust. Um, it's just, it's vitally important that you do that. Because um, sometimes you can have a blockage further on down the line, so although the seacock is open, if there's a blockage, you won't get water coming out. And again, it will cause problems. So there you go. Okay, so that's number two done. Let's get on with starting the engine. So, engine on. Engine isolator on. Domestics on, so everything's on. So we should have battery power to the engine. Good. Let's see if the old girl starts. Run a little bit forward in power. So I put it forward in neutral just to make sure that the alternator light goes out, which it tends to not do because the fact that the alternator is not producing enough power. And we'll let that run up for what 20 minutes, 30 minutes? You know, this thing about not never stopping a cold engine. Well, with the mighty thrum and comforting vibrations of our Yanmar engine keeping us company. Um, I'm gonna turn to a job which is easy to do. Again, so this is job four, three, four I think. Four this morning, and that is just making sure all our electronics work. So, um, let's move on with that. It's actually really nice to hear the engine going again. So anyway, so radar, plotter, previous AIS, VHF, autopilot, keel. Everything we need on so far, so all those are on. Good. So, hopefully, this is the right.
right car, Jacksonville Bahamas, if I put it into its correct case. I have instruments, woohoo! Autopilot works. Alright, let's have a look. Make sure that's all firing up properly. Good, so that's working. Just Good. So the plus is working. AIS is working. Good. So job five. We're really pissing through them this morning. Get the dinghy out, get the rib out, drop it into the water, inflate it, make sure it's okay. And then either today or tomorrow we are going to um, get the outboard down and run the outboard up so we've got modes of transportation when we get to the Bahamas. So another job, it's all good news, get in there. 